Hello YouTube. How you doing? Uh, this uh, video is basically um, going to be about um, the written word in the Bible. Now I've got a few Bibles. I've got this one here. This is the King James Version. Nice big uh, Bible uh, sort of some pit pictures in here somewhere anyway. But um, uh, this is my preferred one, the New English Bible, and um, I've read about how this was uh, compiled, and it was done in 1970. Um, they did the New Testament, they'd finished that in 1961, and the Old Testament in 1970. And basically, they 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 looked at the original scriptures in the in the Hebrew and in the Greek, and um, they they've got notes at the bottom as well when they really couldn't be sure um, if it meant this or if it meant that. Now, but whichever Bible you use, what I'm going to bring up now is is the same in in any Bible. So. I'm not going to go through the whole Bible. It took me about three years to read the whole Bible. Um, but in the very beginning of the book, we have uh, good examples which will get across what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> now, in the beginning of creation, when God made heaven and earth. So it just refers to God. Okay, it just says God. Now we kind of know, or I think we know, that that is Elohim. Now already, we get to just one page in, and in Genesis 2, 5, it talks about Garden of Eden. And so uh, let me just write, um, let me just go back a bit. So, yeah, because there's, there's a few little things I want to say here, so you just have to keep them in your mind. <clears throat> right. Uh, God blessed them and said to them, so this is Genesis 1.28. Uh, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea, the birds of heaven, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. God also said, I give you all plants that bear seed everywhere on earth, and every tree bearing fruit which yields seed. They shall be yours for food. So that's your food. Plants bearing seed, and trees bearing fruit which yield seed. That's that's our food, basically. All green plants I give for food to the wild animals, to all the birds of heaven, and to all reptiles on earth, every living creature. So it was, and God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. Evening came, and the morning came, a sixth day. Okay, so that's that. So then we've got Genesis 2.5, which is only on the next page. Garden of Eden. When the Lord God, right, now, now the name has changed. It's not the same thing. So, in the Hebrew, now this wasn't the word Elohim anymore. Okay, so it's been translated into English, and probably to try and not confuse people, they kept the word God. So we've got God, and now we've got Lord God, and Lord is in capital letters. When the Lord God made the earth and heaven, there was neither shrub nor plant growing wild upon the earth. Well, <laughs> all right, okay. So, well, hang on. Because the Lord God had sent no rain on the earth. But God just said he'd made the, uh, I'm sure it was the fourth day he made the plants Right, so we come back here, so this is still on the 
second day or something, God said, let the waters under heaven be gathered into one place so that dry land may appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth produce fresh growth. Let there be on earth plants bearing seed, fruit trees bearing fruit, each with seed according to its kind. So it was. The earth yielded fresh growth, plants bearing seed according to so there we've got in Genesis 1.11 that the, the, the earth is growing things and now we've got Genesis 2.5 uh, Neither shrub nor plant growing wild upon the earth because God sent no rain because the Lord God had sent no rain so sorry again so it's almost like a complete different story isn't it? isn't it fascinating? Then the Lord God formed a man. Well, I thought he'd already made the man on the previous page. Oh, now he's made him from the dust of the ground. But this is the Lord God. So it's like a different story. Now, I find that one quite weird. Now, I wanted to skip over that. <clears throat> then the man called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all. And the Lord God made, and the Lord God made tunics of skins for Adam. Da, 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 da. Right, so that is Genesis, uh, now we're in Genesis 4, Cain and Abel. The man, I imagine they mean Adam, <laughs> the man lay with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought a man into being. Now they're not saying Lord God or God. So, who's this? Right? Now, I actually think it might mean Adam. Because one of Adam's, you know, we've had his sin already. I skipped over that bit. And, um, and one of his problems was he thought he didn't need God. So now he thinks he's God or something. So, with the help of the Lord, I have brought a man into being. Well, obviously, <laughs> Adam was needed in that. And then she had another child, Abel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Cain brought some of the produce of the soil as a gift to the Lord. Who is that? Adam. And Abel brought some of the firstborn of his flock, the fat portions of them. The Lord received Abel and his gift with favour. So, the Lord liked animals. Liked animals meat. Now as we just read in Genesis 1, 29-ish, God gave um, all plants bearing seed and all trees that bear fruit which yield seed as food. Now Cain doing the right thing, bringing the, the crops Abel was lording it over the animals, as we said we could, but it didn't say we should eat animals. Now, obviously, they get into animal sacrificing, and, and how often does it say in the Bible how uh, what they claim to be God loves the smell of um, cooking flesh? So, um, you know, you can understand perhaps why uh, Cain, Cain got angry when he felt he was doing the right thing and it wasn't God who was, didn't like what he had produced for him. It was something else, obviously. So really, that is just my way of saying to people, uh, the Bible requires discernment. It's it's not the it may have the answers to things, but really, it's a book of clues. It's not a book of answers. And people are saying, oh yeah, it's the word of the Lord, and and it and it gets worse. Basically, I mean that the the beginning bits are the best. Have I made my point? Okay, thanks. Bye.